The major topic of this year at Mobile World Congress seems to be 5G and uh, the CEO of Nokia also mentioned Katrine yes. as a great partner for uh, their 5G development. Yes. How do you think your, uh, your partnership will evolve? Well, first of all, of course, we're very proud of this partnership. It's a partnership between Nokia, Orange and Katrine. So together we have developed a new generation of antennas, uh, which is already five, is 5G ready. Uh, and is combining existing technologies like 2G, 3G, 4G with the future technology of 5G. Now the antenna that was developed you can see behind me. It's a um, so-called hybrid antenna because it is combining different uh, technologies so to speak. The lower part of the antenna is from Katrine. The upper part, the upper third is from Nokia. And the deployment, of the first deployment will be done by Orange. Now what is the advantage of this antenna? Basically what it provides is you can use your existing sites, antenna sites, and upgrade them and make them future proof and future ready, so to speak. Yeah? So you're using the same space, so to speak, but you are considerably upgrading uh, your network sites. Yeah? Uh, that, is, uh, that is one. Two, it's an all-in-one solution. So you have you know, different technologies in one compact antenna, yeah? which of course saves costs and time. Yeah. So these are the two main benefits of this new antenna type. Are you going to produce the 5G antenna also in Romania? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a combined production. Um, so basically the active part from Nokia um, is being supplied and then we do the finishing of the antenna. So we add our part of technology and then the whole uh, the, the finished antenna will be delivered to the customers. So uh, I'm not really 100% sure, but my guess would be that it's going to be produced in Romania. Do you think Europe is prepared for the 5G step because both the CEO of Nokia and yes. Ericsson uh, stated that uh, United States and Asia regions are in front of Europe uh, yes. regarding the 5G developments? Well, that's actually true. So we have to confirm that uh, Europe is a bit behind. Um, I think uh, right now we're not seeing the major initiatives in Europe. Um, of course, there, there are already discussions taking place. Uh, we have several challenges, of course, that we need to tackle in Europe. Um, but the window is still open, I would say. The window of opportunity is open. But others are actually reading, leading the race at this point in time. Because in Europe we have a lower ARPU, we have too many com uh, competitors, we have too much regulation. Do you think these are the main problems? I think the main topic is really the regulation part, yeah, because uh, with 5G we're also talking about new frequency ranges, yeah, and they need to be regulated, obviously, yeah. So we need to go beyond the current frequencies of up to six gigahertz, yeah. We're talking about going up to millimeter waves, as an example. So the sooner you get the regulation ready, the sooner companies will invest, because nobody wants to make an investment if it's insecure, and we're talking about major investments, yeah. So I think yes, regulation for sure. Is a, is a very important ingredient. Um, other than that, of course, you know, we need to build and upgrade our networks. Yeah? We need much more fiber in our networks because all these massive data, they need to be transported also under the ground, not just by the antenna. Uh, I think that's the second challenge we have in Europe, yeah? investing much more into powerful and capable networks. From the mobile operators, who do you think is the best position now for the 5G? Who is your main client, let's say, for the 5G antennas? Well, uh, 5G, uh, to be honest, I think uh, everybody is now investing into 5G. So I wouldn't be able to mention just one name. Um, everyone is, is already engaged in 5G projects and initiatives. Um, and so we're seeing a broad movement towards 5G. It's not just a single company.